Everybody, it's Justice for Comics. It is Thursday. It is time for the whiskey, cigar, and comic show. I'm trying to keep a regular schedule every Thursday. Um, see if I can keep it going on a regular basis. Got a few things to show off, some books to show. I, I did also a. Um, I haven't been to one of the. Lo There's a local comic book shop that's not too far maybe 25 minutes from my house um i don't get over to that part of town very often so um i had an eye appointment over there and just stopped in and it took maybe 30 to 45 minutes to look through their uh back issue bins and, and their dollar bins i haven't looked through dollar bins in a long time and i actually found a, some really good books in the dollar bin today so they're worth a little bit more than a dollar, which is cool. Not tremendously more, but um, some pretty cool looking books. Hey, Infamous, what's up, buddy? Uh, what did you do? Uh, you pulled the trigger just moments ago and purchased the House of X Powers of X trade paperback hardcover. Wow. Mark Brooks, wraparound sleeve. Man, that does sound nice. You'll have to shoot me a picture of that when you get a chance. I'd like to take a look and see what that looks like. I that is a whole other part of the hobby, right? Because I've seen some people's channels. Like I was watching that one guy today, um, uh, the Comic Mint, I think his name is. Man, all his his room is all nothing but like omnibuses and like the really thick ones. You know what I'm talking about? Trade paperbacks, and he's he's probably got. Twenty thousand dollars of the trade paperbacks, <laughs> and then on top of his bookshelves, which look really nice and clean, he's got these huge sideshow statues of various characters. It's pretty nice, um, but that's a whole different um, level of collecting. Like, I, mean, I don't, ha I don't have the money to buy a lot of trade paperbacks and omnibuses and stuff like that, just because. Yeah, Jim meant that was it. Thank you, Infamous. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have the money. All the all my money goes towards new comic books or an occasional older comic book or a spec or something like that. I, you know, there's no money in the budget to go buy omnibuses and trade paperbacks and all that stuff. It says Marvel actually sent him a free copy of the. House of X, Power of X hardcover, and he reviewed it. Very nice. Yeah, that must be a cool part of the job. He's got a lot of subscribers, so. And you get the right connections. So, yeah, so he probably didn't pay for all those maybe, right? A lot of that was comped or whatever for his show. It's a pretty good idea. Not a bad deal. So, um, we got four people in the chat. Yeah, I, I'm doing it a little early. Tonight, I just got some few things I want to do with the family, so I'll try to get this over with by 6.45, 7 o'clock, so I don't have a real long show tonight. But I'll, I'll do a little bit. Um, Comic-Call, a couple things I see 
that are maybe worth looking at that are coming out. So I'll kind of go over that. Um, I understand most most people are probably going to watch this on replay. I don't expect too many people to watch this live just because I'm doing it so early. 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is pretty early. Uh, usually you got to be in that 8 to 9 p.m. slot, maybe 10 p.m. You'll get more people, more eyes on the on the video probably, at least live. So, um, yeah, so let's jump into it. I've got – I pulled out all my Elric books, every single – Elric related comic book that I own. So this will be not only the cigar whiskey cigar. So this is I just doing a recorded video of just showing the Elric books. I might do that where I just kind of have it inside you know maybe a little bit better set up visually so people can see all the different elric books the condition all that good stuff so yeah so we'll start off with elric we'll start off with his first appearance in comic book pony the barbarian number four. that is elric's first appearance i got this at a nice silver aged mylar um, it could fit in a standard Mylar, but it's a little tight. So some of these early 70 books are just a, little, a tad bit bigger um, than the modern book. So they're not quite Silver Age. But, but, um, so there's a little room in this one, in this Mylar, but it, it just presents nice in a, in a nice Silver Age Mylar. So this book, um, if you uh, if you go on eBay right now, I should share that screen here. Let me uh, try to do that. So if I go on eBay right now, and type in Conan the Barbarian, number 14. You know, you get various books here, some auctions going on. But if you look at most of them, if you zoom in, man, most of them are terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible condition. Like, like somebody put it in the washing machine type of condition. Um, like here's one that says higher grade. Now this one's not too bad. The top of that's got some minor tears. Edges of somewhat okay. Edges a little worn there. Little spine, little bit of spine roll. It's really tough to find a perfect spine on some of these early Conans. And I don't see any massive color breaking spine ticks, but you know, there's some spine dents. Um, no major. I'd say this is a fine. If I was grabbing a 7 0, somewhere in that range. It's definitely a 7 5. Looks pretty good. Now this is an auction with four days left and there are no bids on it so far. So that uh, I do find like lately it's really hard to find a, a one that's in really really top shape. Um, mine I felt was when I bought it at the time for sixty dollars. And, you know, this one's pretty rough. This one's way rougher than mine. Multiple spine ticks. There's probably six, seven, eight spine ticks. Um, top of it's a little rough. Some denting on the cover. Looks like some wear in the middle of it. So that's a pretty rough one right there. 
Um, here's a fine plus for seventy-five dollars. This one's pretty nice. Nice colors. Definitely has an issue in the top left corner. A couple spine color breaking spine ticks. Definitely wear in the left bottom corner. Rounding on the other. Yeah, this is this is probably a six five to seven if I had to guess. Um, I think mine's you know in really really good shape versus some of these on on eBay. I mean this I I would vet, I would grade this um, realistically between an eight five and a nine. If if this was pressed, there's a couple little dents in the cover, nothing major, no creases, anything like that. If this was pressed, this might get a nine two. Maybe 9.4. I don't know. I would say 9.2. I'm usually con pretty conservative in grading. This is a definitely an 8.5 to 9.0 all day long. Press, maybe 9.2, maybe 9.4, depending on who grades it. But, um, you know, just a really – this one has a lot of eye appeal. Def, it's This is better than anything you'll find on eBay right now, for sure. I looked at all the copies on eBay, and they, none of them look as nice as my copy. So first appearance – Awesome book to have in your collection. Number 15 is the second appearance of Elric. It's on the cover as well. Again, uh, great book. This is a black cover. This, this is sometimes hard to find a high grade, but it's not an expensive book. I mean, I, pit, I paid maybe $15 to $20 for this book. Um, again, this one's this one's even in better condition than my 14. This probably is a 9.2 to 9.4 range. No spine ticks. Um, all corners are sharp, no creases. You know, it probably it could probably still use a little press, slight pressing to it. So press the four to nine six. It's definitely a nine two in my opinion. So really good looking book for for the age. Who knows though? You send it into CGC, they might give it a nine six nine eight without a press. I don't know. Lately, a lot of people uh, have been saying that the, the standards have been pretty loose lately. So there's number 15. So those are the two main keys to get when it comes to Elric. First and second appearance. Next is, this is the more recent series uh, by Titan. Elric the White Wolf, a really nice cover. I bought two of these when it came out. I just thought, man, this is a nice, nice cover. Beautiful. So I got two of those bad boys. And that's like a $20, $25 book all day long. It's pretty hard to find it for less than that. And then I also got two covers. This is like a one for 10 incentive variant. Um, for... Yeah, 20 to 20, about, about the same as the A cover. It's not as good, but it's kind of a cool looking cover. And oh, there we are. We're back. Picked up two of those puppies. Very nice. And I think that was it. I can't remember if there was a B cover to that or not. Remember if there was Elric the White Wolf number two. Yeah, there is a B cover. I wonder why I didn't bring it up here with me. I know I have it. I must have left it in the box upstairs. Huh. That's disappointing. I know I have that issue. I'll show it on the. Uh, Share my screen here. Yeah, so this is the the, B, the uh, A. I think that's the A cover. The cover. So these are good books, I think, to have for your collection if you can get them. Um, and then of course the Boom Studios. 
These came out in 2010, 2011. All I'm buying is the Virgin, the, the incentive cover Virgin. So there's issue number one, one and 10, number two, which is really nice. These are all Matina covers. Uh, this is number four. So I'm missing number three, number five, which I love number five. That one's awesome. Again, I've said this before. Uh, this is null. Basically, Kate stole null from Moorcock. I'm surprised he hasn't been, Marvel hasn't been sued over it. It should be. I mean, that's totally null right there, right? Uh, number, I think this is number six. This is also one of my favorite, probably my favorite cover might be number six. This one's just awesome. Another. And this is a real close contender. This is number eight. So I'm missing number seven. There's number eight. Another awesome Matina cover. Again, these are all virgin covers. Incentive, one out of 10, one out of 20. And then there is number, I believe this is number eight. So another nice Matina cover. And actually that was... number nine sorry eight yeah missing missing seven so that was number nine this is number ten which is really nice that's one of my favorite covers as well and number twelve so I'm missing eleven seven three seven and eleven is the three I'm missing um, was none. Uh, Jim might have I think Jim talked about Elric first yeah so I was echoing Jim's comments um, I remember the day he texted me about that and I him and I both bought um, Conan 14 on eBay so I was early on that yeah and was the one I Information. All credit goes to Jim. Jim's comics. All right, and the last. Oh, I got two more to show you. This is another rare book that's hard to find. Windy City, uh, Windy City, Windy City Publications presents Elric. This came out in '73, so this is not his first appearance, but it is an early kind of a magazine, black and white, very low print run. There's one on eBay right now, a red cover. So they have made a white and a red cover. There's one right now on eBay that's in high grade. They ask in 125. I've seen this white cover. People ask, you know, 500 dollars for it. I bought this for 40 dollars, so I got a really good deal on this. And this is mint, mint. Um, the highest graded by CGC of these is a 9.0. This would grade higher. This would be like a 9.4, 9.6 easily. So if I sent it in, this would probably be the highest on the census. And then today I was dollar bin diving. And I found this, uh, which was by First Comics, number issue number one of seven, Elric. And it was Elric, the Sailor of the Seas of Fate. So over the years, uh, Michael uh, Moorcock has licensed the Elric character to several different properties. You know, First Comics published it. Uh, Boom Studios published it. Marvel, obviously had some publishing to it with with Conan um, it's moved to Titan I think the last iteration was Titan so you know I think they're still shopping it who knows if it'll be sold but at some point I think you'll see that in a movie but again I got that last one for a dollar and it's in pretty decent shape so what else I got at the store I got V Wars number one beautiful Ryan Brown cover uh, I didn't really know about this book. A nice IDW title. Uh, there's a TV show on Netflix right now of V Wars, Vampire Wars, basically. Nice cover by Ryan Brown, who's pretty popular right now. And also issue number two. Um, basically got these both for a dollar. Um, can't beat it. They're in high grade. They're in nice condition. Just randomly found that in a dollar bin. Uh, another book I found in a dollar bin, which I didn't own, that I almost bought on eBay, and I'm kind of glad I didn't pull the trigger. I just kind of felt like, yeah, maybe I can find that one in a dollar bin or, or a cheap back issue bin. It's the first appearance of Mr. Negative. 
Amazing Spider-Man 546. Um, or 5, 545, 540, man, my vision is, yeah, 546. First appearance of Mr. Negative. He's going to be supposedly the villain in the new Spider-Verse 2 movie. So, yeah, I've seen this book go between 8 and $10 on eBay. I got it for a dollar, so it's in high grade, so can't beat that. Another one that uh, I probably would never bought, but I think there might be a profit movie at some point. Young Blood number two, first appearance of profit. Um, that could be a good book to have in your collection. I was really into profit when Stephen Platt was doing the artwork. Um, Platt was one of my favorite artists back in the day. I liked him a lot better than McFarland or Liefeld. I still don't like Liefeld's artwork, but so I did buy a, a Liefeld book, <laughs> um, uh, only because it's the first appearance of the Prophet. Key book to have, and, and for a dollar, can't beat that. Dollar bin, dollar bin book. So those were the the comic calls that I. I Picked up some of those books for a dollar today at the LCS. Um, let me just also show you. Uh, real quick. I showed this yesterday on my new comic book vi video day. Um, one of the cover. Uh, this cover is really cool. I did grab this, put it in my pull list, um, sold out in Midtown. It sold out really quickly, so I don't know what the um, publishing or the print run on this is, but it might be low. So kind of a cool-looking cover, Picard. Countdown number two, the Sari, Sarah Pitra Dosher cover. It's a nice-looking cover. Uh, it did sell out very, very quickly on Midtown, so I did grab a copy of that. And I also grabbed a copy of, there is a B cover. They're not showing the artwork on it. It looks like it's a photo variant, incentive variant, but that one's still available on Midtown. Uh, Wellington number one. I really, really like this. This variant. It's a one for 25 um, on eBay. It's been selling or people have been asking $50 for it. It's still available on Midtown for 25 I picked up a copy. I think I just think it's an awesome cover. Long term, I have no idea if this book will have, be of any value or not. But um, in my opinion, it's a great, um, just a great looking cover. So it kind of reminds me of the, the EC covers, the horror covers back in the day. So that was one that I picked up. Another book that I picked up that I've talked about a little bit this week um, is an X-Files book, which I used to like X-Files back in the day. I remember watching the show. And there is there was comic books that came out. I think Topps, Topps believe it or not, published comic books um, probably, what, 10, 12 years ago. Um, and look, it's still available on Graham Cracker for five ninety nine. So I grabbed a copy of this, a couple copies. I just love this cover. It's it's definitely an homage to an EC cover, uh, X Files cover, black and white. Just really cool looking cover. Uh, it's a one in ten incentive. I I looked for an entire day. I couldn't find any on eBay. But there is one on Graham Cracker right now. Very fine to near mint. So anybody watching this stream, if you're interested, you like that cover, um, I would grab it. $6. I think it's absolutely a fantastic cover. Uh, and it is a difficult book. A um, couple of websites I looked at said that this published, the print run on this is probably around 1,000 copies only in existence. So pretty rare. I would say it's pretty rare. Not in demand, though. You know, I don't think a lot of people are collecting X Files comic books, but um, I just think it's a really cool cover to have. And for six dollars, shoot, with shipping, maybe you're going to pay ten. Uh, it's not a bad deal. So that's a book that 
um, I think is worth having in your collection. Uh, so what else is going on? Sometimes I check CBR to see if there's any news. I didn't check it today. Um, I know the Star Wars movie's coming out on the 20th. Hard to believe next week will already be the 20th. Um, uh, a lot of uh, I've heard a lot of YouTube controversy. Uh, some people think it's going to be crap. Some people think it's going to be good. I don't know. Um, I mean, I get the SJW stuff. I mean, yeah, some of the things in the first two movies. I mean, I felt they were entertaining. So overall, um, I didn't hate the star the, the the last two Star Wars movies. I thought they were decent. Uh, they were entertaining to me. I mean, they kept me entertained the whole time. So that's what a movie is supposed to do. Uh, but yeah, there's elements to it that I can understand. The people that are really deep into Star Wars, they don't like the fact that Ray, you know, everything comes easy to her, right? She masters flying Han Solo's ship, uh, which took him all of his life to do really well. And he, she just walks onto it and immediately starts fixing the ship and <laughs> starts doing all these remarkable things, um, you know, under the premise that the Force is basically assisting her probably right but if that was the case how come Hans, uh, how come luke's um luke skywalker didn't do all that right so yeah i mean i understand the criticism but i'm a star wars fan i you know you can't please everybody so i'm just hoping that it's uh it's entertaining which i think it will be like jj abrams usually does a good job for me anyways um folklords number three boom uh, studios book it's been pretty popular um, that is coming out next week. Uh, there's a couple different covers. That's, I think that's the main cover by Matt Smith. So I've got that on my pull list. I don't think you, I don't think they have the B cover shown yet. Uh, I'd like to see, I, I'm ordering it just in case. That, there you go. That might be the B cover then. Uh, it says interior. No, yeah, that's so. So there's the variant cover, which really looks pretty cool. Dustin Nugin, Nugin, can't pronounce his name. It's a nice B cover. So Midtown doesn't show the image of it, but that looks like it. That's what it is. So that book looks pretty hot. I think you should definitely pick that, those books up for sure. All right, let me check the chat. Stevie B Comics. Uh, the whiskey I'm drinking. Uh, I'm drinking uh, Buffalo Trace, my friend. It's a nice, it's a nice smooth bourbon. Matt in Florida, it's not easy. To, it's not an easy whiskey to, or a bourbon to procure. Kind of difficult to find. So I enjoy it. It's nice and smooth. Not super cheap, but um, it drinks. From what I've been told, it's like a fifty, sixty dollar bottle. And it drinks like a $300 bottle of bourbon. So uh, that's why it's so hard to find. Where I live in Florida, you know, you've got liquor chains like ABC Liquor. They never have it there. Uh, there are smaller liquor, liquor stores that once in a while you can find it at. Uh, I'm trying to be befriend a few of the people that have small liquor stores to see if I can maybe get the bottle for That's kind of what you have to do, though, on some of those rare, a uh, little bit more rare type drinks. You got uh, you got to find an edge, man. It's just like you do in comics. It says uh, Ray tapped into the Matrix, and it was a quick unload of pilot training. <laughs> and away she goes. I know. I mean, so the defenders of that are going to say, "Yeah, it was the Force, man. The Force, the Force guided her on how to pilot, right?" I mean, I can understand that, but I think it, it, I think it irritated a lot of people. Um, you know, Luke Skywalker, it was a progression, right? It took him time to learn the force. It took him time to develop his skill, but with Ray, it's like, boom, instantaneous. She's picks up a lightsaber. She right away can defend herself and, and in fact beats the villain 
in a lightsaber duel who's been training all of his life, you know, that part of it, it's a little ridiculous, but, um, what are you going to do? Hey, immortal biggie shack. What's up, buddy? Um, hoping to be on, uh, one of the upcoming battles again with Mr. Miracle. Uh, enjoyed that. I did lose to Mr. Miracle, which I predicted. Uh, that was a little better. Uh, I failed big time on Ultimate Comics Spider Man number 26 and 20, yeah, number 26. First appearance of Ultimate Taskmaster. I knew that. I had actually ordered the book uh, three or four days prior. So I should have gotten that question correctly. And I guessed Evil Mor Miles Morales. I don't know why. I knew that that was Spider-Man Volume 2, which I had that book as well. So I just kind of got nervous. I think at some point, I will predict right here and now that uh, I think eventually I could beat Mr. Miracle. Um, I don't know everything. I'm on the Key Collector app all the time looking at keys. You know, it's, a lot, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of memorization. You know, the brain only goes so far. <laughs> Thank you, Immortal. Hit me. He says, you fought well, brother. Um, I tried, man. I mean, it was, some of that stuff was obscure, like, uh, you know, first artwork by Jim Lee. I think he did inking only. He didn't do pencils. I mean, that was definitely a tough one. Um, and all this time, I thought Jim Lee's first art was on an X-Men title, like an older X, like issue two something 216 something like that yeah it's hard to remember all that stuff first appearances are a little easier first artwork you know that's definitely a little bit more difficult but that was a lot of fun i i was probably taking it a little too, too seriously <laughs> so but i think i'll do better is a little there we go my connection's a little in and out here i'm outside sometimes my wi-fi is not the best i'm only going to be on for another 10 minutes or so so i'm on cbr let me go over to bleeding cool hopefully i don't get a ton of pop-ups I usually go on Bleeding Cool using a different browser because they're known for their their pop-ups all the time. Bleeding Cool in a few days. I don't know if there's anything in here. Barry Windsor Smith to release a Monsters graphic novel next year. That could be cool. Uh, that might be worth Greg Windsor Smith. Uh, Marcus was kind enough to kind of, I mean, I always knew who Barry Windsor Smith was, but Marcus furthered my appreciation of the artist through a lot of his AOKs that he sent me. So that might be worth grabbing. Uh, yeah, sometimes Bleeding Cool has some interesting articles. A lot of times they don't. Uh, Batman's Grave. I did read the first issue. I thought it was okay. Uh, I I haven't picked up issue number two yet. Uh, I, some of the reviews on it were mixed. Some people liked it. Some people thought it was a little dull. Um, there's some really obscure articles on here. Captain America. I don't really know too many people that are collecting Captain America. I kind of wish they'd put a better writer on that on that title. I don't know. You have to write him a certain way, and I just, I just don't think there's been a lot of really good writers on Captain America for a while. Uh, yeah, but being cool. Eh. Some black label books like Brian Azriello's coming out with some black label titles. Um, Birds of Prey. So black. He's been doing a Birds of Prey black label. That could be cool. I like that cover. Look at that cover. 
Lou Pacino. Lou Pacino's a good artist. Yeah, that's nice. I like that cover. Pretty cool. All right. Manny, the comic. Manny said he got that Miles Morales number 13. Book. That's a good grab. That book's, I mean, I just bought it because I love I really like um, Roz's artwork. That's the reason I bought it. So I'll flip to that. Show that came out on Wednesday. I think it's sold out everywhere, at least online. My Zafino cover still available. <laughs> I got a good deal on that. I'm glad I I'm glad I shopped and looked around because I'd have been pretty pissed if I paid sixty three dollars for it. Yeah. So the both covers are sold out. But yeah, the Raza cover, man, that's that's the cover to buy, in my opinion. I love that cover. So I had no idea that there was a first appearance in there. I didn't know anything about it. I just saw that cover and I said, Oh man, that's a nice cover. And I saw that Raza was the artist. And I was like, Yeah, I gotta I gotta buy that. So, you know, that's the problem with pre ordering. When you pre order books, you don't get to see covers in advance a lot. So it's tough to pre-order everything perfectly. Um, I don't normally collect consistently Miles Morales books, but I like a lot of them. I, usually they're decent. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a hot book right now for sure. I, I think on eBay it's going between ten and fifteen dollars. Uh, Morbius. Um, I did pick up this EM Gist cover. I just like the cover. It is sold out on Midtown. Uh, Around what I paid for for it on eBay. I mean, on uh, on Midtown. If you can get it cheaper than thirty dollars, I would highly recommend picking it up. I just think it's a cool looking cover. I think Morbius is always going to be fairly popular. If the movie comes, they do a good job. Jared Leto really plays a good character, which I think he could. Um. You know, a lot of that Morbius stuff can blow up. His first appearance is obviously an expensive book now. I would love to find a mid to high grade copy of the first appearance of Morbius, but yeah, it's still that's going to be what five six hundred dollars for a nice decent grade, thousand dollars or more if you want high grade. Yeah, it's an expensive book. Uh, probably January February, I've got some capital coming in that I'll. You know, I'm going to be looking for a key book to purchase around that three to four hundred dollar range. Usually, I try to buy like three to four really good key books every year if I can. I need to do a video on the on my key books that I bought this year. I, I need to do a video on that. It just takes some time. I need to go through my collection. The hardest the hardest thing is just inventory, man. Just pulling out stuff. It's it's difficult. So, um. Yeah, I like that Miles Morales Venom cover too. That's pretty cool. I didn't even see that one. It's pretty nice. All right, let's go back to the chat. Uh, Infamous says, "Wasn't there a full first full appearance on that Morbius number two? I it, I don't think so. I don't think there was. I didn't I didn't hear that there was. Immortal Biggie Shack says, "Hey Justice, I got." Some Elric spec. Conan 15. Conan 15 is. Um, what was that? That's, I just showed that book, I believe, right? Second. Second full appearance, right? There we go. High grade. Copy that. This is probably a 94 to 96, if I had to guess. Um, yeah, that's a great book to have. 14 is your key. That's your first appearance. 15 is your first, uh, or 15 is your second appearance, I believe. So 15 is still a good book to have, but I think 14 is the one that um, everybody really wants. Mortal says he spent $12.50. Man, that's, dude, that's cheaper than I paid. I think I paid like $20 or $25 for my copy. I got a high grade copy, so I was really happy with that. Um, I think it's selling for a little bit more than that in high grade. Uh, 
Oh, Infamous says uh, Morbius number two is the first full appearance of Elizabeth. I'm not too familiar with the character. So, yeah, Key Collector is usually – so I wouldn't disagree. I just didn't see anything about it. I, I didn't – you know, usually I check like um, – but Comic Book Invest does that bolo list uh, every every week. I don't think I saw it on there, but yeah, they probably they may have missed it. So that may be something that uh, they may have missed. Uh, but yeah, those are awesome books to get. Biggie Shack is always scouting those those dollar bins, those cheap those cheap back issue bins. I was watching his video there the other day. It looks like he was in a pawn shop, or you know, I'll start looking around. What I probably around and say, hey, you guys have any comics in, in your inventory? And then go down and just look look through them and see if I can find something. Usually, if you take the time, you find usually can find something. Um, I'm in Florida though. Florida's weird, man. I, I don't know. I, I find that it's a little bit more difficult in Florida. I see a lot more videos of people that live up north. Small towns, Chicago, New York, whatever. I think they have a little easier time finding stuff in back issue bins, dollar bins. Florida, it's a little, it's a little diff different. I don't know. I, I haven't had too much luck at pawn shops and things like that. But then again, I'm not. I'm probably not looking at looking in those areas too often. So that's probably something I need to spend some time doing. All right, man. Um, Manny says the LCS had Red Mother one per store variant for ten dollars, and I passed. Wow, good for you, man! Uh, I did pick up that Red Mother variant. Um, which is the one I picked up? I think it's the Nightmare Nightmare and Elm Street homage. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. I mean, it's a couple cool looking covers from Red Mother. The premise sounds interesting. She gets like a, I don't know, like an artificial eye. I don't know. She gets a new eye or something like that. And yeah, that's the one I picked up. It looks like Putri did that, but it's not Putri. It's uh, his artwork. He's pretty good. I like his artwork. I just like that cover. That's a Awesome looking cover. So I picked that up for like twenty twenty dollars. Uh, I don't have it yet in hand, but it's supposedly on its way to me pretty soon. I also like the second print. That second print cover is freaking awesome. Look at that, holding the eyeball, and it's a sick cover. That one I will definitely try to pick up as well. The second printing of Red Mother, I just I like that way better than the uh, the regular cover. So. I will definitely grab. Uh, there's also oh, that's folk lords. Sorry, <laughs> strike that. So there's the thank you variant that Manny passed up on black and white. That's a pretty cool looking cover. And some some stores were asking a hundred bucks for that thing. I think my LCS had it for like twenty or thirty twenty dollars. I think. Man, you got some good willpower, man, to pass that up for ten bucks. Thank you for doing that. I I might have pulled the trigger on that. One per store. That's a pretty low print run. So Manny just is Manny's like, nah, man, I don't like that cover. Forget it. Ten bucks. Screw that. I wish I had I, I need to have better resistance. <laughs> All right. So we got Four, four people in the chat. I'm probably going to wind this down. Almost time for dinner. I might jump back on later tonight, see if anybody's doing some streams. Once in a while, I'll try to jump on somebody's live stream if I can. But uh, Biggie Shack usually has something going on. That guy's he's a beast. He's always doing live streams with Comic Head. I, I like their channel. I, I tune in quite a bit on, the, on those two guys' channels. All right, guys, I'm going to wind it down. Um, I appreciate everybody that joined in. I know most people are going to watch this on on playback. Uh, I just wanted to show off some of those books. I uh, had a little 
one shot of whiskey, nothing too serious. I'm trying to calm that down a tad. The um, holidays are upon us, so I'll probably be doing a little bit more drinking in the next week or two. <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm kind of um, pacing myself. All right, everybody, I appreciate uh, you tuning in. 45 minutes, that's long enough. I'm going to end. On tomorrow, doing the CBS content. So look for that. Hope everybody has a great evening. I'll see you soon.